All right, today we're going to be answering an ancient philosopher's question. Does Portland need a metro? <laughs> so some people, including me, have thought that for a while now, the Max should be buried underneath the streets of Portland. We need to get the trains off of street level and underground. But to do that, should we build a light rail system or should we build a metro system? I'm going to provide points for both sides of the argument and I'll tell you my opinion at the end. No skipping! Firstly, here are the arguments in favor for building a metro system. Right now, Portland's light rail system has the fourth highest ridership in the US when it comes to light rail. We have the fourth busiest light rail system. So that's a lot of capacity, that's a lot of users. So making a metro system would hopefully help ease the crowding. Metros can be much more easily automated thanks to being fully grade separated and not having to deal with certain other factors. Plus, lots of light rail train manufacturers in the US, of which there aren't very many, aren't making things that are automated. Metro systems have been undergoing automation for decades, so that would make it much easier to do so. Automated metros also have their own benefits, which I might make a separate video talking about when I compare Portland's transit with Vancouver, Canada's transit. But they have their own benefits, such as less staff members required, higher frequency can be attainable, and lots of other things. Metro trains also look a little bit more professional, as in the trains just look a bit more substantial to a city rather than just streetcar-like vehicles that are hooked together. This would also have a standardized design. If you start fresh, all your train cars can have the same exact design so that the doors are in the same places on all the trains. And this makes it easier to add platform doors so that it increases safety. Here are the arguments against building a metro. We already have a rail system around here. There's no reason to rebuild and reinvent the wheel. Where would you draw the divide? Would you keep Max at all? Would you have it fully taken over by Metro? If you had it fully taken over by Metro, it would make it a lot easier to store the Metro vehicles somewhere. But then you would also have to do a lot of grade separation projects, a lot on the west side, the yellow line would probably have to be completely submerged underground or completely elevated, and other stretches would also have to be redone, like 17th Avenue on the orange line or Burnside on the blue line, among others. This next point is highly debatable, and I have an argument against this argument in a second, but it might be overkill for the Portland area, having such large, high-capacity and high-frequency trains. Again, that might not be strictly true, and I'll explain myself later. How, if at all, would it connect with existing rail services? We have Union Station, we have the Transit Mall, we have, which currently has the MAX on it. We have other areas where there are streetcars. We have the MAX currently. Would you keep it existing and have the Metro connecting at certain stations? Would you want redundant stations to have a Rose Quarter station and an underground Rose Quarter station in use by Max and this Metro? And on that same token, if you're storing some trains at Elmonica and Ruby Junction, where are the Metro trains going to be stored at? How would the system expand? Should we expand the light rail system or should we expand the Metro system? What would be the fate of the Max? Would we sell all the vehicles, get a bunch of money, and just expand the rest of the Metro? Would we just do this one Metro line and say that's it? Would we just give up on one or the other, give up on light rail or give up on Metro in favor of expanding the other system? It would be more costly as well because we would be kind of starting fresh. So not only would you have to build the new tunnels, you would have to keep Max operational still and have to start a new type of service. Not exactly cheap and easy to do. All right, so let's talk about my vision for downtown. I definitely see a world out there where you can walk on the streets of downtown Portland and you won't see the Max at all. You will not see the Max. 
If you want to get on the Max, you're going to have to go to a station and take an escalator ride down into the tunnel. I've said this before, but I think the Max has needed to be off of the city streets since the day it opened in 1986. We, there is no reason to have the tracks street running. In that case, we should have built a streetcar system for those areas, and the rail system should have been submerged just like any good rail system. And that might mean that maybe it would have made more sense for us to have made a metro system from day one, even if it was a light metro system like what's in use in Vancouver, Canada. But it wasn't built that way, so now we have to fix it. Now we could, again, take the approach that Vancouver did with the SkyTrain, which I think is a super cool system, but because we already have an established rail system, the MAX, it makes more sense to just fix the MAX than it does to kind of start over. Now about that point about, oh, what about the population? Wouldn't a metro system be totally overkill for a city of 600,000 people? Maybe, but maybe not. Uh, Portland's population is actually higher than Vancouver, Canada's. Not by much. It's really, really, really close. But Vancouver has a light metro system with three lines on it, with two branches on two of the lines. And they not only have a light metro system, it runs insanely frequently. The trains are smaller and less capacity than something like the New York subway, and yet it carries large volumes of people. Lots of people use the system, and it is excellent and fully automated. And so it would have been nice had we built it that way in the 80s, but we didn't. And so the point I'm trying to make here is that I don't really think there is a city that's too small for a light metro system. Portland's would absolutely do just fine. Seattle would probably work even better because they have a lot more grade separation, a lot of elevated and underground stretches. Maybe at some point over the next couple decades it will be converted to light metro, but until then, light rail is light rail and we got what we got and it's still a good system. So the Max on the west side would pretty much be as normal, except some grade separation projects such as 185th Avenue, 205th Avenue, 170th, to, uh, Century, all of these intersections would be separated, just like how Brookwood Avenue was separated when the trackway was first built, because it's a really busy road. So, and there's going to be a lot more trains going through the area after the Better Red project is completed. And so, yes, some grade separation projects would be nice for the Max. But I would like to see pretty much the same thing that we already see up until Washington Park. Then as soon as the trains enter downtown Portland and are in the Goose Hollow area, the tracks would begin to dip below the surface and would go into the new downtown tunnel. Blue Line trains would end up underneath downtown and underneath Columbia Street or so before turning and going underneath 6th Avenue. And it would be underneath the transit mall on 6th Avenue. And it would serve a station near Portland State University and maybe nearer to the City Hall, Pioneer Square and Union Station. A lot less stops in downtown so that you can hit some higher speeds and it makes the ride much, much faster. Then it would turn where Union Station is, go underneath the Willamette River, and serve underneath the existing Rose Quarter platform and through the Lloyd Center area. Then it would emerge from this tunnel just east of the Lloyd Center after Holiday Park, and it would go over the freight alignment and into the Banfield Freeway tracks. The Red Line would have what's known as a flyover junction, or fly-under junction. When you want high frequency train operation and you want things to interfere as little as possible, if you have the tracks going in through the tunnel this way and you want to have some sort of branch that goes this way or this way, you don't want to just build tracks and then build some more tracks that come off of it. That's really confusing, but think of how the Max Green Line and Blue Line join up by Gateway Transit Center and how there's one of the track has to go over both rails before it connects again, that can cause some delays and interference and limits the frequency on the trains and thus limits the capacity. 
So if instead, where the tracks branch, if the one that's going to cross over the rails to branch, if you have that one in a separate tunnel that goes up and over the tracks and is fully separated, that's known as a flyover. That's really confusing to word it. I'll provide a link to a video from the Vancouver SkyTrain where you can see the flyover tracks where there's just a single switch that the train can either go one way or the other and then the track hops up over the existing track and never crosses multiple tracks. That's bad. Um, the flyovers will help that. And that is what I would do here where the Goose Hollow station is, the blue and red line trains would serve Goose Hollow. The red line trains would branch and go underneath 18th Avenue and serve Providence Park so that there would be some variation and there would be high capacity train service to Providence Park. Then, just like today's system, the tracks would take a right underneath Morrison Street, so there would actually be tracks in both directions underneath Morrison Street. But then at the Pioneer Square station, the tracks would again perform a fly under or whatever and connect with the existing tracks again north of Pioneer Square. That's really, really confusing, and I'm probably going to have to draw that on a map to show you what I mean. And all platforms within the tunnel for blue and red lines would be long enough to support a four-car max, just in case we wanted to extend trains to that length later if the ridership went way up. I would say at the very least, TriMet should try to expand blue line train platforms to four cars in length because it does get that busy. Some stations are flat out impossible like Hatfield, Sunset Transit Center, and Washington Park, but if you got special trains for the blue line only that were just one long walkthrough train, that would provide higher capacity and could allow for some experimental operation where you could lock off some of the doors that don't quite fit in the platforms, and so those would not open and the rest of the doors would open. Something to try out. It's not something that's unheard of either. There are places in the UK that have been doing this forever. Then there would be another tunnel, the green, orange, and yellow line tunnel, that would be also on the transit mall. So the blue and red lines would use 6th Avenue as its tunnel there, and so there would be some stations along it. The green, orange, and yellow line trains would provide stations underneath 5th Avenue. So after Rose Quarter, the trains would combine, likely also in a tunnel of combined, you know, flyovers and all that sort of thing. There would be a tunnel that would go underneath 5th Avenue. And so, yeah, there's going to be a lot of complex flyovers through here, and that is going to be expensive to construct. But if you construct it all in one go, instead of starting construction, stopping construction, starting construction, that's way, way more costly when you do that. Just do it all in one go. Then, you could have the green, yellow, and orange lines all travel underneath 5th Avenue. And then you could add like an auxiliary track or something at 5th and Jackson to turn the green lines around. You won't actually need to turn them around anymore, but instead they could just pull into the last station and then pull back out going the other way. And then orange and yellow lines would take a left underneath Lincoln Street, and that's when they would emerge from the tunnel again by going up into Lincoln Street. The platform at Lincoln Street, Southwest 3rd, might have to be rebuilt at a different location because that is quite a ways up, but I do think it would be worth it. And also, never we're, we should be past the phase of this whole deep tunnel boring thing. Cut and cover tunnels are much cheaper to construct. They are more disruptive, and it would mean that the entire transit mall would be not usable for a long time, but again, I think it's worth it because you only go through those disruptions the once, it's cheaper to do, and then you just place the road back on top after you cover. That's what the cut and cover means. Tunnel boring machines are expensive, the whole process is expensive, and this is really not the direction we should be moving toward. Maybe underneath the river or where things start to get much deeper, then maybe uh, those sections could be bored out using a boring machine, but that should not be our primary method of tunneling. Then after this point, Portland Streetcar could easily expand and take over the existing tracks that are on the surface. 
turning tr streetcars around at Goose Hollow, having them come all the way down Yam Hill and Morrison Street, and providing more local service. You could reopen the Kings Hill platform, provide more stations between Providence Park and the library, reopen the mall platform, and anything else that would add more local service in this corridor. And transfers are important as well. If at Pioneer Square you could easily just walk over to 6th Avenue and the escalators were right there and you knew where the entrance was to the subway station entrance, that would be perfect. The three easiest connections would be at the Goose Hollow, Rose Quarter, and Lloyd Center platforms, where you could literally be on the streetcar platform there, which is today's Max platforms, but you could be at those streetcar platforms and take a single escalator ride and you'd be at platform level. It would be that easy. So transfers are important, reusing the existing system is important, and three new streetcar lines could be constructed here. One that goes from Goose Hollow to the Lloyd Center and up in through the Lloyd District, potentially on 15th Avenue, replacing some of today's Line 8 as well as lines that could branch and go the other way on 1st Avenue and go over the Hawthorne Bridge. Some of these could end up on Hawthorne Boulevard or on Morrison and Belmont Streets, serving more of the east side and serving more neighborhoods. Food for thought, I guess. Actually, I suppose while you're at it, you could add a fourth streetcar line that also goes through the Lloyd District, goes over the Steel Bridge, and ends up serving the transit mall stops on 5th and 6th Avenue if you wanted to retain tracks on there after submerging the max underneath 5th and 6th. Like I said, food for thought, really. I really, really think we have been past due for submerging the max for a very, very long time now, and we definitely need to be moving in that direction as the system gets heavily used. Just imagine how many more people would be using it if it were underground. It would cut the travel time down considerably and it would just make the whole system make more sense. It would allow the streetcar to really easily expand and there's a whole host of benefits. So that is my thoughts on this issue. I thank you for watching this and I will see you Friday.